In today's video, I'm sharing the four body system model, which is a basic model that shows how to balance our four bodies. All humans have four separate energetic bodies, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And our goal here is to learn how to balance and integrate these four bodies. Because when they are in balance, we have a clear pathway to health and wellness. We understand our true being. There is an exponential increase in our self-awareness. And we learn to respect and listen to each body simultaneously without over-identifying with any one particular body. So in this video, we will discuss each energetic body in detail and how to develop the awareness of that body. Next, we will discuss how these four bodies are interconnected and also we'll discuss how to use the four body model system for healing. I've added timestamps in the description below, so feel free to skip forward. So we'll start with the physical body since our physical aspect is the most obvious one. It's the densest of all the bodies and hence it's visible to the naked eye. When you look into the mirror, this is the body that you see reflected. So our physical body starts growing from the moment you are born and it keeps growing till the very last breath you take. So in one way, this body, it needs minimal intervention from you for its growth because it's already programmed into the cells of the DNA. Like even if you didn't do anything, the body is going to keep aging. Now this physical body, it mirrors the functioning of the other bodies. As an example, so let's say a person has stomach issues, stomach ailments. This usually has to do with some emotional imbalance. Headaches, as an example, has to do with control issues. So any illness or dysfunction is a sign that there is an imbalance somewhere and we need to pay attention. And if you want to explore this topic, Louis Say has a book dedicated to different ailments in the physical body and their energetic causes. And I highly suggest checking it out. You know, one way to think of the physical body is think of it as a space suit that you wear to experience planet Earth. Like one of my teachers often used to say, no body, no ascension. As in, we can't ascend this plane without our physical body, without tending to our physical body. And we can't even be in this density without our body. So taking care of our physical vehicle becomes paramount. Because if you don't feed it properly or give it ample nutrition, sunshine, fresh air, recreation, it will dwell problems. So let's talk about practical ways to increase physical body awareness. So number one, commit to things that support your physical body. This could be nutrients, supplements, foods, cleanses, and even detox. Physically supporting your body through exercise, it could be yoga, tai chi, running, or any movement can be very supportive. Breath work can be very beneficial. And so is spending time in nature and making sure you get enough sunlight. Now checking out different healing modalities like acupuncture or chiropractic adjustments or even massages, that can be supportive to the physical body. Sharing love and intimacy with others, that increases your joy, your physical well-being, and it's actually one of the easiest ways to bring your awareness back into the physical body. And in general, you know, really making your health your number one priority that will naturally draw your attention to your physical body. Perhaps the best advice to increase your physical body awareness is that make your body your best friend. You know, talk to your physical body like you would talk to your best friend. You can communicate with your body because it has an innate intelligence. It will talk back provided you develop that relationship, you develop a bond of trust with it. You know, when I first started meditation, one of my teachers taught us that wake up every single day and say out loud to your body, 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 I love you. Let me know in some gentle ways where I need to pay attention. And you know, when you sincerely commit to developing a relationship with your body, 
Eventually, it will tell you what it needs. It will tell you how you can support it. You know, there's an old Latin saying, a healthy body and a healthy mind. And so if we don't have a healthy body, our mind will suffer and of course, vice versa. Now the next body is the mental body and it's usually the most developed of all the bodies. Now this is the body that enables us to acquire new knowledge either through reading, studying and through intellectual explorations and pursuits. Now our schools and colleges, they often focus specifically on development of the mental body, almost at the expense of other bodies. In our culture today, this mental body, its development is expected, it's encouraged, and it's also well compensated. But you know, to have a highly developed mental body without having a healthy physical body, a mature emotional body, and a wise spiritual body, we will not have holistic growth and development because on its own, the mental body has no strength. And you know, I also find it very interesting that often people who are super attracted to spirituality, they often immerse themselves in occult knowledge in, and they rapidly develop their spiritual body, their mental body, but without opening their heart, without healing their relationships, they can't truly embody the wisdom in that spiritual knowledge. And so such a person can appear enlightened and yet there is an inherent imbalance that they haven't addressed. Now the mental body grows as long as you are learning new things. So as an example, say a college graduate keeps learning and upgrading his skills every single year. Now such a person is going to have a robust mental body compared to someone who may not be interested in learning new things. Now a developed mental body is not necessarily better what matters here is how well it is integrated and in harmony with other bodies. So let's discuss some practical ways through which one can develop mental body awareness. So number one is increasing your witness conscious awareness. This is also called neutral observation. That is being able to observe external events in your life without emotional shutdown. Next is actively working towards increasing mental focus. That is getting rid of distractions, getting rid of scattering thoughts or tendencies. Next is identifying triggers and thoughts that take you off course. Like really make a list of people, places, things, times and events that seem to bring you down where you interact with them and you start doubting yourself or you lose focus. Because once you identify these triggers, that's literally half the work. Because once you can see something, you can address it, you can change it. My next suggestion is to develop mental body awareness, stay connected and present in your physical body as much as possible. My next suggestion is create a set of tools that help you refocus mentally, especially when feeling weak or frustrated or even depressed. Now, this could be a set of mantras or affirmations that you can say out loud whenever you feel you need to refocus and rebalance. Perhaps the most potent technique that you can develop is to train your brain to turn off at will. And when you turn off that mental motor, that is when you tap into that non-linear mind, which is a source of genius ideas, new ideas, new thoughts, and even healing. Moving along to the emotional body. So the emotional body is what makes us sensitive to music, to arts, to dance. And when this body is unstable, we feel as if we are being tossed around by our emotions, or we feel we can't get off emotional roller coaster rides. Usually the emotional body is the least developed of all the bodies and more so in people who are highly developed mentally. You know, the most important thing that I can tell you about emotional body that I really urge you to remember is that not having emotions does not mean the emotional body is developed, as neither is being uncontrollably emotional. Like one of my teachers says that this is often where the stoic philosophy is misunderstood, because 
True stoicism is not void of emotions. On the contrary, it's about feeling deeply, but not letting your emotions rule you. We need to feel deeply to have empathy, love, compassion, care, not just for ourselves, but also people around us. Because if we let our emotions rule us, we become like a two-year-old throwing tantrums, and that's obviously not what we want. Now, the emotional body, it grows when you learn how to manage your emotions, your emotional triggers, without letting them overwhelm you. This body also develops when you allow yourself to feel deeply. You know, it is said that the majority of humans have an emotional body of a seven-year-old. That is, whatever emotions you had at that time, they get hardwired by age seven. And then your default emotional landscape through which you look at the world, through which you interact with the world, is that of a seven-year-old. Now, an interesting fact about the emotional body is that even though this body is invisible, it can cause you to put on weight. So as an example, people who overeat, they use eating as a coping mechanism. They use eating as a way to numb themselves. And this is something which is pretty common and something I also experienced in my life. And here's the catch. You know, once these people address their emotional encumbrances, their emotional triggers, their emotional pain, that urge to eat food, that urge to stuff themselves up simply vanishes. So let's talk about practical steps you can take to develop emotional body awareness. Number one is learn to connect with your emotional feelings. That is to be able to feel your emotions inside your body and connect with them through your thinking process. Next is learn to integrate your emotional self into your physical and mental self. Learn to express what you're feeling in this now moment, like being able to say, I feel angry. Oh, now I'm feeling sad. You know, being able to name the feeling that is arising within you, that is potent. Next is learning to express your emotions without becoming stuck in them and without over identifying with them. A lot of times when people are working through their anger, shame, or even guilt, it's very easy to get stuck in it. So to be able to say, I am feeling shame versus I am shame. Next is to be able to identify the source of your negative thoughts and emotions. Because again, you know, once you identify the source causation, what is triggering something, that's half the work. And also being able to identify and discern which are your thoughts and what is it that you're picking from people around you or anything outside of you. My next suggestion is commit to removing and clearing all unproductive and damaging thought patterns from the past. For this, you will need to address your fears, your limitations, insecurities, and then clear them. Identifying all emotional conflicts, bring them to the surface, have awareness of them, and then resolving them. Because a lot of times when people repress their emotional conflicts, it, create, it creates block in their emotional body. And then after a period of time, the emotional body starts to feel heavy. It starts weighing them down. Eliminating draws such as guilt, obligation, emotional vampires from your life is going to be super helpful. And so is consciously eliminating all emotional drama or any person or circumstance that might feed into that kind of relating. You know, a signpost that you are developing or on your way to develop your emotional body is when you allow yourself to feel deeply and only respond from a place of calmness, of wisdom and inner core strength. So moving along, the fourth body is a spiritual body. And this is how we feel our connection to all things, to God, to divine, to a higher self. And this spiritual body, it encompasses all other bodies. So if the other three bodies are not developed, the spiritual body will suffer. Now, the spiritual body has little to do with what religion you follow, what culture you come from, and it's all about your connection with the spirit. 
So as an example, you know, when you tap into your intuition and you listen to your intuition, you listen to that inner guidance and you follow through with it, you are strengthening your spiritual body. Similarly, active imagination is a byproduct of a robust spiritual body. Now, the spiritual body, it grows to the extent you consciously spend time connecting with God, with your higher power, and the health of this layer will also depend on your initial conditioning, your family of origin, and the culture you grew up in. And the hallmark of a highly developed spiritual body is wisdom. So let's talk about practical ways to develop spiritual body awareness. Number one, a good place to start is by studying the law of one practices. Now I'll put a few links in the description below to study law of one and I highly suggest checking them out. So my next suggestion is using meditation as a tool to quiet your mind so that you experience inner peace with all things. Next is reducing and resolving conflicts in your relationship with yourself, with your God, source and the universe. And really making a spiritual commitment that you will be a knower of God, that you want to know God as a direct experience and not through some intermediary. You know, one of my teacher often says, she says, talk to God like you were talking to your best friend. Like you can ask questions to God all day long, pour out your heart to God and ask for guidance every single day until your prayers are answered. Like you can say something as simple as, Beloved God, what is your will for me? What would you have me do? Now, with everything that we have shared so far, at the heart of the four body model is what we are aiming for is balance, integration, harmony, ease, and flow between these four bodies. Now, for a moment, just close your eyes and reflect on your life and see where is your consciousness stationed for the most part. Is it in your mental body, your physical body, your emotional or your spiritual body? Chances are if you are highly developed mentally, the real estate of your consciousness could look something like this. And what we want is that for each body to be balanced and making 25% of the wholeness. Now this brings us to the fact that all these four bodies are interconnected and they help and support one another. So as an example, if our mental and physical bodies are developed, but our emotional body is not developed, then our spiritual body will suffer because it is our wisdom that guides other bodies into further development. Without the wisdom of the spiritual body, the mental body will go astray. Without the wisdom of the spiritual body, the emotional body will not know when to restrain itself. Similarly, the knowledge of what food to eat. That is an example of your mental body helping your physical body. And when physical body goes and exercises and works out and it brings down the stress, that's an example of the physical body helping the mental body. So when we look at these four bodies and their interconnection, now a good thing to note is that if you want to raise your EQ, then you can't focus on the emotional body in isolation. You have got to address the other three bodies. You take care of your physical body through exercise and nutrition, make sure you have nurturing thoughts, take time to meditate, and all these activities together in a way will also support into the development of your emotional body. Now, when we look at mental health through the lens of this four body system, you know, we start to understand why mental health is so rampant in today's culture. So in today's day and age, majority of us are highly developed mentally, but emotionally we are underdeveloped. And so we have this overactive mind. It feels the pressure but emotional body has no idea what to do with that pressure and it can't release that excess stress and hence causing even more overwhelm, even more anxiety. You know, in my own experience, one of the best ways to reflect and contemplate on these four bodies is to visualize them because the moment you give images to your brain, now you're tapping into that nonlinear brain. 
So as an example, let's say you're 30 years of age. Now, in an ideal world, we would expect that all four bodies to be equally developed and also 30 years. So just for a visual, let's just assume you're 30 years and all these bodies are equally developed. They are all 30 years. But in reality, what actually ends up happening is something like this, where your physical and mental body is 30 years, but your emotional body is, say, 7 years and your spiritual body 10 years. Creating an inherent imbalance in your aura, in your energetic field, and potentially how you address challenges and obstacles in your life. And you know, as you start to contemplate and build awareness of these four bodies, you might find that each body has a different personality. And perhaps one where one body is more feminine, the other body might be masculine. You might notice that one body is maybe 65 years of age, even though your biological age is only 30 years. And so start to play around and see what opens up for you. And just as a side note, please know that there is no right or wrong answer here. Your answers will change as your consciousness develops. Now, once you start working with the four body model and really start to embody its innate wisdom, you will start to realize that at an energetic level, whenever there is an imbalance between these four bodies, outwardly, it may manifest as disease. So the gift in this knowledge and having this awareness is anytime you feel unwell, start discerning, okay, which layer is the pain stemming from? What do I need to do in order to heal this pain? And then ask your body, hey, what would you have me do? You know, as a side note, I will add that it's perfectly okay to tend to one body in a more focused way for a short period of time. Say you're preparing for a marathon, or you're going on a vacation, or you have a deadline at work, or you're going to a meditation retreat. Perfectly okay to focus on just one body at a time, as long as the overall context is balance and integration. And as you understand these layers, it will help you develop and better yourself with every passing day. And most of all, it will help you create more harmony between your body and mind. You know, in my meditation practice, the four body model is the foundation system that I work with. Anytime I have aches, pains, something happening out of the ordinary, I always tap into the four bodies and just like to know, okay, where we, how am I feeling, where we at, what I need to pay attention to, and on and on. And in all my future videos, I will be referencing to the four body model. So I figured it would be a good idea to dedicate a video on this topic. Now in the description below, I've put a link to a few articles where you can learn more about four body model systems. So feel free to check those out. You know, as you start contemplating on the four bodies, I would love to hear your thoughts on how you feel about the four body model system. Is it simple? Is it resonating with you guys? And what is it that stands out the most for you? Like for me, it was the simplicity of using it. And it just feels so easy and yet so potent when you use and apply and start embodying it on a day to day basis. And as you contemplate, I would also love for you to ask yourself, see if you are consciously developing each body. And if not, then what is the roadblock? What is it that's preventing you from developing each body separately and consciously? Outside of that, if you have any suggestions or feedback, please let me know in the comments below. I always read your comments and I look forward to hearing from you. As always, please only take what resonates, discard the rest. Thank you so much for your time and I will see you in the next video.